Are you wondering what it's like to be an engineering apprentice at Heathrow Airport? Well, in this video, you will have everything you need to know. It includes an interview with one of the current engineering apprentices, and right at the end, there's some bonus tips for your application. So make sure you stick around. My name is Moti, and I'm an aerospace engineering graduate working at Heathrow Airport. Welcome to my channel. Let's get right into it. I'm going to introduce you to Santiago, who I met during the Duke of Edinburgh. Yes, you get to do a Duke of Edinburgh if you're an apprentice at Heathrow Airport. Santiago is a fourth year apprentice who's been at Heathrow for the past four years. He's going to be sharing with us some of his experiences as an engineering apprentice and telling us exactly what it's like from his perspective. So first things first, what is the engineering apprenticeship about? For somebody who's brand new to the apprenticeship scheme, they don't know anything about it, how would you describe it? If you don't know anything about it, the easiest way to explain the apprenticeship is it's full of work and learning. That's that's the, the core principle of an apprenticeship. You work and you learn. First thing you're gonna to need to know about the engineering apprenticeship at Heathrow Airport is that it's a four year program. The first year you spend in college. In the first year of the apprenticeship, you'll be at Kingston College. And at that point, you'll do your level two, which will be advanced manufacturing. You'll be machining three months. Then three months, you'll be doing electrical installation. And then three months after that, you'll be doing hand fitting, which is hand tools and how to file and stuff like that. And then once you'll also be doing the level three, on a single day. You get to mingle with people, uh, college, different companies, uh, different kind of skill sets, ages, and you'll work through that with your like cohort, and then you'll slowly branch off. You get to choose what sections you want to go into. Do you want to be more mechanically minded, more electrically minded? And that's where you'll get to choose your career path at college. And three years after that, you spend working on the job, getting your hands dirty, surrounded by technicians, where you're actually learning how to do things practically at the airport. Then when you come out of that first year, you'll do a mini graduation. Yeah, yeah I finished this level two, let's move on. You'll go to work and you'll be in your section. Uh, you'll do four months at a time. So you move every four months to a new section. So you get to try out quite a few. You'll be on shift two days, two nights, four days off. Each shift is 12 hours, seven to seven. And you'll be on day release. So you go back to college one day a week from there on after. So the second year, you'll finish your level three. Then the third year, you'll start the level four. And the fourth year, you'll finish the level four. And that, that's how it runs. So as Santiago mentioned, it's a four year program. The first year you're in Kingston College, getting your hands dirty, learning, actually spending time at the college, really understanding the theories. And then in your next three years, you're on the job. You're working a shift pattern. So that is two days on from seven o'clock in the morning till seven p.m. in the evening. That's for two days. And then you do two nights where you start at seven p.m. and you work till seven a.m. Those are 12 hour shifts and during those shifts you'll be working as part of the team to actually maintain the airport in various different departments around the block. And if you roughly know what you want to do you can put forward where you want to go. You know you'll get given a list of these are the sections we have. Do you have any idea of where you may want to try out? You may be wondering what is it exactly that I would be doing as an engineering apprentice? This is a very important point. Now, a lot of people, when they hear engineering and they hear Heathrow Airport, the first thing they think about is this little thing right behind me, planes. You may be thinking that as an engineering apprentice at Heathrow Airport, you'll be maintaining planes. That is when I tell you, ah, you are wrong. That is exactly not what we do at Heathrow Airport. At Heathrow Airport, the engineering team looks after the actual airport itself. So what does that include? So Heathrow is a very complex place and it needs a lot of different teams to be able to look after it. To give you a breakdown of these teams, let's look at a map of Heathrow Airport. The first and most obvious things that need to be looked after is the actual terminal buildings themselves. The terminal buildings have designated teams that look after each specific building. I actually went to T2. Um, so I went to terminal. It's been one of my favorite sections. I really enjoyed working with the team, but not just that, it was interesting to see how, so in the terminal, we have obviously lights in the terminal, but it's crazy to think that the lights all communicate back to a system that we have at our end. We could turn one single light off in the terminal wow. from there, just one. We could turn off a whole strip, we could turn off a whole block. And I didn't even know that. And that just sparked curiosity. Little did I know, these lights have to be programmed. 
they need to be given an address so the network knows how to communicate to that light and it will tell you is the light on is the light off is it faulty is it an emergency light and all of this just for a light and i was thinking wow i was like a lot goes into this you know even the cabling you know it's not just two cables you need to run communications cables as well because of that which is known as the dali system you, you get to figure out how all these systems work that for you as a passenger or an individual is just normal but what's all behind the scenes where does this all come from we do all the air con in there which is quite nice you know how do we keep the the building at certain temperatures you know what are in place even for example which way do the doors open how much do they open by you know stuff like that because that takes into effect of how much energy you use heating and cooling so so yeah just yeah you get to see all these all these things and obviously terminals are a massive building but i definitely enjoyed it and the next obvious thing is the actual airside infrastructure now we have a designated airside engineering team which looks after all of our infrastructure from an engineering perspective airside that's everything from the runway lights to the stand entry guidance the thing that leads the plane into the gate. So I joined the airside team. So airside engineering uh, basically look after the airfield and look after things like lighting, um, landing guiding systems, and all of the FEGPs, which for people that don't know, uh, are ground power supplies for planes when they land because they turn off their engines. So plug those in, look after them. And that's that's what we mainly do. Look after all those bits, bobs, substations, and so forth. Mm. But what the main thing that was that was interesting there is to get to be so close to a runway is something you never really like. It's kind of breathtaking. You're like, wow, it's actually this big. When you're in the plane and it's doing its thing, it doesn't seem that big of a thing. But when you're there next to the runway, you're like, wow. Wow. This is quite mad. <laughs> but there are some less obvious teams that work behind the scenes at the airport. For example, we have a water services engineering technician team. This team looks after all of the different water services that we have in the airport, including the drinking water, the foul water, the sewage system, the fire main system. That all falls under one team. Another team is the generations team who look after a huge biomass facility sat at the south of the airport and they maintain that and they look after that. We have another team called Estates. I went to Estates Engineering. So Estates Engineering look after all of the buildings except terminal buildings um, at the airport. I believe it's 402. Don't really know the number off my heart, but a good old amount of buildings and the car park. So it'll be lighting. It's all kind of like uh, domestic stuff, but for an industrial place. So, you know, lighting, um, power supplies, you know, all things inside offices and um, air conditioning units. So that's what um, they look after when I moved on to that section. The next team is called the engineering materials team. Part of the materials team is a full-fledged engineering manufacturing workshop where they can create anything that the operation may require. Anything physical that needs to be built can be made in the engineering workshop. The next team is our baggage team. Now, within engineering, the baggage function where we have technicians involved, that is simply the HBS process. The rest of the baggage maintenance falls under Vanderlander's responsibility where we have created a strategic partnership to work hand in hand with Vanderlander where they maintain the rest of our system. Last but not least, we have the rail team. Now what the rail team does is it looks after our track transit system and our pods system. The track transit system is the train that takes you from the main terminal building in Terminal 5 all the way to the satellite terminals and then back again and the pod system is what takes you from the long stay car park in terminal 5 up through guideways and then drops you off at the actual terminal and this is a fully automated machine but it needs an entire team of technicians to look after it so pods are autonomous vehicles that take you from a business car park to the terminal terminal 5 and they are basically a laser and electric guided system. So it works on a loop based system, but anyways, we won't get too much into that. <laughs> they pretty much run on a Ford KA um, chassis. So they use the same kind of wheels. They use the same base subframe and it's a lot of kind of car mechanics in there. Yeah. So you'll have to, you know, do the same stuff as, as if you would do for a car. Um, but with all the tech inside, we're looking at bearings in the wheels and we're looking for bearings across um, 
the the wishbones do they need to be replaced so check your wishbones underneath uh checking all the is it all mechanically sound is it charging correctly um is the ac working properly you're going to go through all these checks and they're going to plug in a computer and go are the lasers calibrated do they tell the right distance mm. um and from this you basically go into quite in depth um for what you do there um you'll look at also the controller side so from uh, the controller's perspective, rather than the mechanic uh, or the technician, you'll see what they see, which is a nice um, sort of map, which tells them where each vehicle is, where it is on route, what's its destination, and you'll get to look into that as well. Are there any alarms going? Is Because there's a feedback system, it will tell it, look, uh, tire pressure is too low, so it will need to come in, the tires need to be inflated, you know, um, and you'll get to go through all of this kind of stuff. And then, not just the vehicle, but the track needs to be maintained. Uh, the CCTV cameras need to be maintained. So is all of the track loops working? Because to tell the vehicle where it is, it needs to be over a loop. So an inductor loop, yeah. So, yeah, exactly that. Leave a comment down below and let me know which department you think you would enjoy the most. Now, this is what makes the Heathrow Apprenticeship special because they don't just sort of funnel you into one specific thing that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. They allow you to try a whole range of different things and then you get the ultimate decision of what you enjoyed the most and where you want to specialise for the future. If I don't know exactly what I want to work on but I want to work within engineering, then Heathrow is the one because we work so vast, you know, it's a mini city and because it's a mini city, we've got to maintain all of that and therefore you apply to it because you don't know exactly what you want to do and that's why you're applying. Now you may be asking, what does life after the apprenticeship look like? Well, the fact is, the choice is yours. You can start on the apprenticeship scheme and just remain a technician for the duration of your career as many people have done with an engineering at Heathrow Airport or you can take matters into your own hands and start climbing the corporate ladder and becoming a senior manager as also many people have done within Heathrow. Some of my managers and some of my senior managers, even the director of engineering, started off once upon a time on an apprenticeship scheme. The fact is, the choice is yours. You can do the apprenticeship scheme and then become just a technician or you can choose to climb the corporate ladder or do everything else in between. Ultimately, you get to decide. Now, if all of this sounds interesting to you, then you're gonna wanna continue listening because now is when we get into the specifics of what you need to be to be a good apprentice. Let's hear it directly from Santiago. The biggest advice I'd give for whether they're gonna use it for this apprenticeship scheme or anything they do is open-mindedness. Mm. Always walk into it with an open mind because sometimes you can apply for something and it may not be for you but you may move to a certain section and that may, may be your niche. You may fall in love with it. So okay. always walk in with an open mind. As an apprentice, it's all about um, being able to obviously work with people, being able to learn new skills. You know, that's that's another big thing. You know, if you're not willing to learn something, then don't bother applying in all honesty because you will have to do quite a bit of learning. You know, you have to do a level two, a level three and a level four as standard. So, mm. um, you know, uh, so learning is a, is a big thing, but otherwise, just just an open mind, just curiosity, openness, and being able to ask these questions. Sometimes challenging questions mm. is how we move forward in the current society of today. You know, is it right what we're doing? Are we doing it the right way? You know, all these questions are how we move forward, and that's what needs to basically continue. You know, as we develop technologies, as we develop uh, relationships and careers, it's all about asking questions it's just basically it's just why you know once you want to know why something works or why does this happen or you know those are the reasons why you go into a certain job field you know you're curious you're like oh why does that work out like that or why does this do this as Santiago mentioned being curious is one of the most important things as an apprentice as an engineer in general you want to constantly want to be learning about different things asking questions keeping an open mind and learning 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 constantly learning four years where you get to spend so much time with experts in the field 
It's down to you to ask those questions and really take matters into your own hands when it comes to your learning. That's the sort of people that thrive as apprentices, people who are constantly asking questions, people who constantly want to learn more, and people who are constantly listening and willing to get their hands dirty. Many people think an apprenticeship means you're gonna miss out on the social life and the uh, sort of fun stuff that you get to do at university, but that's not the case. Listen to what Santiago has to say about that. If I'm going to be honest, the highlight of the apprenticeship is the year group I got to be in. Let's be honest. The crew. Yeah. So forming that bond in college is important. And I think it's important to be able to form that bond. Obviously, you make friends as well with other people. But forming that bond is really important because it's nothing like your year group because mm -hmm. that's your team, pretty much. You know, you're going to go to college for the next four years on day release together, you know, you're going to be seeing each other at work, monthly meetings, all these kind of bits and bobs. And to have that is is amazing. That's the best. That's the best overall highlight. If I'm choosing a big thing. I love that. For example, you get to do your mini graduation after the first year. That's a nice, um, a nice little touch. You get to basically dress up nice. You can bring your family to show them all the stuff you've made by hand to meet your lecturers or whatever and then after that you do a little award ceremony nothing big but you do a little award ceremony and then you could do after that whatever you want for example if you're over 18 go out and party do whatever you want <laughs> you know for example me and the rest of my year group we decided to go out to spoons to the club we stayed there in kingston in the hotel you know we're partying all night long um so yeah that, that was that was great and if you made it to this point in the video now i'm going to give you three bonus tips for the application process the first one is make sure you actually understand the job description make sure that in your application you make it apparent that you know this isn't planes you know this is maintaining the airport and make sure you actually show that you understand exactly what this job is about and show why you're excited for specific parts of the role the second bonus tip is make sure you understand the values of Heathrow Airport. Heathrow Airport is a company that is run by its values and it's something they hold very, very close to their heart. And it's something that you actually get to see when you interact with people in the business and when you're working in the company, they truly make sure that these values come to life. So by making sure you understand those values and integrating them into your answers, you allow people who are reading your application to know that you are a good fit for the company. And last but not least, the third and final bonus tip is simply be yourself. Make sure that the application process really allows us to see who you are um, and brings to life your passions, your hobbies, all the things that make you unique and make you different, lean into them. Because that, at the end of the day, is what will make you stand out from all the other applications. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was beneficial and I hope you were able to understand more about what it's like to be an apprentice at Heathrow Airport. It is truly a fantastic opportunity and it is something that will really make your career take off. Feel free to absolutely smash that like button. And if you like this video, then there's another video right here that you will absolutely love as well, where I talk about what I do as an engineering graduate at Heathrow Airport. It's a very different path, very different career option, but it's also an option that can still give you some amazing experiences. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.